Hello everybody, hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's Connor, we're back here with uh, an individual uh, live stream. We'll just connect the old mic here, everybody. Two secs, it's a good start. Let you keep any comments in, please, and we'll get going. Oh, the technicality, it's like Oscar last night. If you missed the debrief, you are missing out, literally. <laughs> How are you doing, everybody? How's your day been at work? back with the live stream hope we're all doing fantastically fantastically well listen i'm out of practice a little bit with the old live streams i've not done them in quite a while but we're back here discussing leeds united we're back here discussing daniel farker's press conference your thoughts on the easter weekend that is coming up which honestly i just feel i have to talk about it when it comes to leeds united and engaging and interacting with you guys i feel like i have to do it at this poignant point in the season we're not talking wigan we're not talking brentford but we are talking that Easter weekend when we contextualise how big this is for Leeds United. I am of the full opinion. I fully believe this could be wrong, but I think this moment in the season, as it says in the thumbnail, is season defining. I think this weekend is huge for Leeds United. I think it's huge for Southampton, Ipswich and Leicester. We look at the games Friday, Monday for each side. We look at the competition that, let's say, a Southampton are facing in those two games. I look at even Leicester City right now and the shaky news that they've had with the PSR news being dock point next next season. If they remain in the championship, they're screwed. There is a lot of mentality pressure right now on Enzo Maresca. There is a pressure on that pulse right now to get things right at a club like Leicester, who really, with that squad, shouldn't be playing in this division. So with Southampton, massive pressure as well. Top calibre quality squad. Not sure about the coaches when it comes to Enzo and when it comes to Russell Martin. The pressure right now is so interesting because it is being firmly put on the top four sides. We go into this weekend as well with a couple of injury bits that we're going to get into a little bit after we get into a few of your comments. Ipswich Town right now almost seem like for this weekend, they're a little bit ready-made. They're, they're okay right now. I believe Wes Burns is going to be back for this one. But when it comes to Leeds, Leicester and Southampton, there's a lot of things to discuss really. Injuries for Southampton, problems everywhere at Leicester City, which could 100% derail any, any side, especially a side with egos, a side with top quality operators at this division. It's going to be so interesting to see how this pans out. And Leeds United, obviously, with the news that we've heard today, how and this is what I want to get from you guys. We've got a really excellent video coming out praising Daniel Farker very, very soon. That's already edited, ready to go on the channel. But this weekend's going to be interesting when it comes to the German. I think this weekend is going to be the real tester for him. And I'm going to get into the reasons why. But I want to hear your thoughts, everybody. Uh, happy Easter, Connor. Thank you so much, Tom. Really appreciate that. You're going to the whole match, mate. I'm not, Jay. I can't get there tonight. I've got the mother and father coming to stay. So I can't, unfortunately. Did get offered, but I can't. Uh, Stephen Ward says, evening, evening, everybody. Hope we're all good. Uh, you can become a YouTube member as well. Loads of you did so last night. Two quid. Comment section below. Um, make sure you do so as well. Patreon as well. We've got bonus bits on there. And we'll have bonus post bits as well. And, and Easter weekend bits. If you're missing out on that Leeds United content. So what's gone on? What's gone on? I hear you cry. Well, Pascal's out for the remainder of the season. Um, very disappointed, I have to say. Uh, I have to say very disappointed about that. I, I had an inkling. We spoke about this three weeks ago on the channel. And I said to you guys, I, I, I'd be, and I said it on the debrief as well, I'd be stunned if he wasn't out for the rest of the season. Obviously, it looks like he's, you know, uh, he's recovered well, Pascal. But altogether, it's one of those where with a hernia, uh, my brother had a pretty serious hernia, operation and we know the medical science which is is uh is 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 unbelievable right now um sorry i'm mixing up rutter there <laughs> but when it comes to strout we know there's there's incredible um medical science when it comes to getting players back on pump but listen uh it's 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 too it's too, too much of a tall order and he's going to be ready for preseason says daniel farker rutter is where the hernia is the issue, and we'll get on to that in just a little bit. But just in terms of the significance of Strout being out for the remainder of the season, I, I do think it it is quite big. And the reason I think it's quite big is that checkered flag's coming down. We know it is on Friday. Leeds United are going to be going into a game where they play last Leicester and, and Ipswich will be playing beforehand. We'll know the results. But I think Pascal Strout, you know, captain this season, a real 
poignant player in terms of Leeds is, you know, sort of rise to the top, really, in my opinion. Someone who balances Roden out really well. And I like him. I like Strauch a lot. I think he was developing a lot as well this season. And I find it really, really sad that he's going to be out. The blessing here is that we've got two centre-backs who have been nothing short of majestic. You know, I am in admiration of both of them. I think the amount of minutes they have played and the dedication and quality that they've brought to this Leeds United side and how they've just both just embedding themselves in the fabric of side before self has been nothing short of exemplary. I use that word a lot, but I think you can attach that to many Leeds United players this season, especially those two. They went away with Wales last night and... You know, no problems with them both. Ampadu went down after a strong challenge, but he got back up, was back into the fold. And and I just, I, I think the, you know, the reliance on these two now, especially with itty bitty injuries, it looks like from the outside for Cresswell and Liam Cooper, we know isn't very, very dependable or reliable. But this is what we're speaking about on the One Leeds fan channel in terms of the end of the season, wherever Leeds are, we're going to have defensive issues when it comes to players out of contracts, players who are on loan. You know, who is that dependable player that you can say is going to perfectly fit into the Premier League um, without any any problems? It's going to be Joe Rodon, isn't it? Because you don't class Ampadu as, as a proper uh, out-and-out centre-back. Pascal Strout, rightly so, from everybody, there's been questions from previous and he, and he has got an injury record. Pascal Strout, we know that. But the dependable, reliable, quality guy is Joe Rodon, and he's not even our player yet. He's not even our player. So that is something that is, you know, something that we need to keep an eye on there, something that we need to keep an eye on in terms of that restructuring of the defence, which is going to have to happen in the summer. And it's almost like compiled with Pascal Strout right now because he's now got that season-ending injury. And I think you introduce Pascal back into the fold right now, it's only going to be beneficial for Leeds United. I think we all know that. It's going to give us a little bit of systematic difference. You're going to be able to push Ampadu back into the midfield, which is where he's best at. And I just, uh, yeah, now it is going to be a heavy reliance for the last eight games on keeping Ethan, keeping Joe at the back, which, listen, three goals conceded this season. I am not complaining and I am happy with that. As you can tell, I'm still buoyant. I'm still happy with what's going on at Leeds United. And I, and I do thoroughly believe and firmly believe that those two are going to be absolutely fine. No problems. No problems from my end. I think the beauty about having depth is it's the options. And I think we're all a little bit, when it comes to Cresswell, when it comes to Cooper, especially with the minutes that they've had, the Ampadu, Rodon and Strout triangle, you do not want to break up whatsoever because I think the quality difference from Farker's perspective and probably from our perspective as well to go to Cresswell or Cooper is a massive quality drop-off, especially with eight games to go, eight massive games to go. That really, when I say season-defining, it's also a massive point in Leeds United's history. I know we've had the ownership takeover. I know we're in a better spot, but we had this. We've had this before, you know, in 05, 06, when we were on the precipice of something great, you know, in terms of getting back to the Premier League first time of asking. It didn't quite happen for us. And then we saw the financial mismanagement of the club. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. I am not saying that whatsoever, but I am almost amplifying how getting back to the Premier League at the first time of asking is, one, extremely difficult, but at the same time, easier than it will be in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth season, as we know. So getting back there right now is huge and having the players available for the remainder of the season, your better players, is always going to be preferential. Uh, let's get into a couple of your comments, everybody. Um, I'm more nervous about this season than we were, the one we went up in. It's weird, Ryan. I'm the, I'm, I'm the exact opposite, mate. I think it's the consistency and momentum that we've shown over the past however many games. I think that's, that's really been beneficial to Leeds United. But I also think we've got a better quality side now. I think the first season, the 18-19 season with Bielsa, I was more worried because of the level of team we had, which hadn't been massively invested in with Andrea Radrazzani and co. And I didn't think the calibre of squad was anywhere near. and don't think it's anywhere near what it is right now. So, yeah, I think I'm less nervous, but there is no doubt that right now, even with that Sheffield United and Norwich season, that was the most difficult season, as we all know. This season, in terms of teams, in terms of structure framework, quality of opposition, it's better. So that season, remember how hard that was. Sheffield United went on that rampant run, as did Norwich. 
this season's harder statistically backed by Opta, backed by any sort of data um, data site you'll find this season. All four teams are going to probably finish higher or on point really with Norwich that season and probably way above Sheffield United and Leeds did that season. So the, the caliber is so much better. And um, yeah, that's probably why I'd put this season as the, the, the you know the, the 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 team that is much better than that one under Bielsa. But yeah, nerves are nerves are going to be creeping in for me tomorrow, one hundred percent. Catwoman says hi. Uh, JC says a Leicester player is maybe looking at is a, at as it doesn't matter if they go up, uh, they'll be moving on at the end of the season. Uh, hi Connor lad, first ever live after two years watching the channel. Love it. Cheers, Matt. Um, if you want to see more lives, listen. We went to shorter form content because people like the news a little bit quickly. They like the edited videos. If you want me to mix them up, I can mix them up. I can do that. There's no problem. I know a lot of you guys enjoy the lives. I know you enjoy the reaction, getting your thoughts in as well. If you want me to do that, let me know. Honestly, this is I'm not a sort I'm not a content creator who's just going, this is what I'm doing and that's it. I'm not, honestly, I'm not. If you have suggestions or anything like that, let me know. I, I really appreciate it. There's over 31,000 of you lot who subscribe to this channel. I want you to have a voice as well. Um, if Joseph is fit, uh, he's a sort of player that could really expose. Uh, Farker has been immense this season. You're right. This is the real test now. Juggling players, injuries and morale. Certain people hold our nerve and get automatic promotion. So let's get into that comment, Nige. So overall, the picture for Daniel Farker was ugly at the start of the season. A very, very ugly picture. 10 players going out. It was a nightmare for him to deal with. And I think at the start of the season, when you saw him being interviewed, I think he was a little bit tetchy at points answering journalists' questions because I don't think he knew what was going on himself. Who had loan clauses in the contracts? Which players wanted to leave? Which agents were talking to who? Why is a certain individual not happy with what's going on? Now I've got to deal with that. There was a lot to deal with in the summer. An actual overhaul when it comes to the San Francisco 49ers. Steinson coming in, Hammond coming in, you know, structural developments when it came to Underwood and all this sort of stuff. So everything was moving for Daniel Farker. He wasn't coming into a stable environment. There was rumours circulating that Leeds' number one option was Brendan Rodgers and they'd had him in the building and they were talking to him and it was a Brendan Rodgers last minute decision. That meant that he wasn't going to be at Leeds United anymore and go and, and was going to Celtic. If you remember, everyone was talking about this. Every, Brendan Rodgers was nailed on and Daniel Farker then came in as the number two and everyone was like, oh, that's, that's great, but Oh, Brendan Rodgers would have been nice. You know, he's, he's done really, really well. He's won the FA Cup. People forget about that right at the beginning. So he came into a very unstable environment. Now, when we look at the, the picture that is Leeds United, it was difficult at the start. But then as soon as that got a little bit better, as, as soon as that was rectified and we started moving beyond the Sheffield Wednesdays, the Cardiffs, um, you know, all that sort of rabble at the start of the season, the Birminghams, and we started getting into a squad towards the back end of the transfer window, aside from Sinistera, which was another problem. Um, as, as when we got past that, you started to see a real cohesiveness and synergy develop within the squad and friendships, which is huge, really, really big. Not just partnerships on the field, but friendships off the field as well. And I think that was big. And I think there's a lot of credit that needs to be laid there to Daniel Farker's door. As I've just said, we're going to be doing a video separately on that. That's already ready to go. But I, what I will say with Daniel Farker is he's impressed me so much when it's comes to the Cresswell situation, the Jed Spence situation, and the Willie Nonto situation. But what I will say, personnel-wise, injury-wise, quality-wise, which, which embeds itself, intertwines itself with availability, he's not had to deal with. He's not had your Joe Rodans out. He's not had his Ethan Ampadu's out. Glenn Kamara. Yoel Perot. And I know Perot has not been a massive feature, um, but he's your 16 million quid signing, isn't he? Your Willie Nyontos, your Chrysensio Somervilles. These players, for any point in the season, you haven't seen them be out for three, four weeks. Haven't seen it. That's massive, especially with your core players. Now, in the Bielsa season, because of the seasons, because of the load, we would see multiple of our better players injured. It would happen. Aside from Ben White, it was pretty much the whole squad. You know, you Pat Bamford's in that season, you Pablo Hernandez, it would happen. You held Acosta's. Jack Harrison would be out for, for, he would barely be out, but when he was out, he was out. Um, so I feel Daniel Farker, the test is massively on now. It is, it is because I think he's done an, an excellent job. 
excellent job. As I keep saying, got videos coming out on him of where I'm praising him hugely and he's proven, not proving me wrong, because I always I was excited about the the appointment, but I don't know if I was elated about the appointment as I maybe would have been with a Brendan Johnson, uh, a Bre uh, uh, Brendan Rogers. But the test is now, he may be coming into a period of time where Groves out. There's been a lot of discussion about him being out with his ankle. Um, now there's chat about Conor Roberts being out. And, it, and I, I did watch the, whale, the, the Welsh highlights back. I didn't like how he was moving after he'd been subbed at all. I, I did not like that. For me, he looked, he was moving very, very gingerly. And, and listen, they come, if it's an impact injury, they'll come off, they'll be hobbling around a little bit, but then you might see him walking off towards the end of the game and, and, and they'll be okay. You know, they'll be walking into the tunnel, they'll be all right, shaking the leg off. He was limping. And I didn't like that whatsoever, especially with such a quick turnaround with, with Watford and then Hull City. So on the back of that, uh, let me just get my sheet up. You've also got William Yonto, um, who's apparently got hamstring a hamstring injury. And we've also got Strauch, who's now out for the season. There was questions on, on, on Charlie Cresswell as well. So when you're trying to move around this squad now, this is where it's going to be so interesting because Leeds do have the depth. But Daniel Farker is going to have to trust players now that maybe he hasn't trusted before. A lot of people are talking about a Charlie Cresswell if you want to see Ethan Ampadu go back into the middle, if that's going to have to be something because we've always had a six there. Always been a six next to Kamara. So if Gruev's out, what then? Because if you put Archie in there and Roberts is out, then does Shaq go in at right back and he's barely had any minutes? Is that going to suffice against Watford? In a pressure cooker game, do we have a choice? There is so many moving parts now. Ampadu can't really go back into central midfield. Junior Firpo is likely to be out for this one because he was playing, um, or he's going to be. He was playing last night in in uh, Peru at one a.m. So the travel times just aren't going to work. Now that means that Byram can't go right back because he's going to have to go left back, and if Roberts is out that would mean Shaq's going to have to go right back. So these are all different eventualities right now. And the reason I'm speaking about this different structure change and framework change is because Daniel Farker is now going to have to play players that aren't starting for us week in, week out. Now, the beauty of this is that the players who have come in have been excellent. Jaden Anthony against Chelsea, Matteo Joseph against Chelsea, Archie going into central midfield against Chelsea and, and at the start of the season. They've moved around and players who have come in have done really well. Shackleton, to be fair to him, at the start of the season, we know calibre-wise he's nowhere near good enough, but he was doing what Jamie Shackleton do, does, you know, and he was he was trying his best, which uh, it does worry me a little bit at this stage of the season because trying their best isn't something I want. I want a proper player in there who quality-wise is going gonna, is gonna, to, you know, withstand the, te withstand the test. So... Yeah, I mean, we've got a couple of, of lineup predictions in terms of alternate things that Farker can do, but it's going to test him this weekend. And this weekend is the biggest test of Daniel Farker's career so far at Leeds United. It's two games over a four-day period. The Easter weekend has been the maker or breakers of sides. We've seen it make Norwich previously. We've seen it break Leeds United previously as well. So this is where he has to earn that money. And this is where, with the squad, now a little bit of a crossroads when it comes to well, who's available. We've got hamstring injuries here. We've got ankle injuries here. We've got a player who's going to be arriving late from Peru. He can't, he can't really play. He's going to have to start trusting other, other members within this squad. And then he's got to get the best out of these members because this game on Friday, I, I think we'll win, but it ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be easy whatsoever. Um, so yeah, interested to hear your thoughts on that, everybody. Uh, Paul says, it's the quick turnaround that makes this Watford game difficult. It is. Uh, some are criticising Farker for not getting bodies in, in January, but how was uh, he to know about the international break? I don't, Danny, I'd be, I'd be really, really surprised um, if people are criticising Farker for that. No, I really would. Uh, Kieran says, I hate how confident I am. Uh, it's just not the, not the norm at all. Uh, we need a live in the car with Connor. OG, mate. Live after 6pm. Definitely, mate. Uh, let's get a, uh, a couple of other comments in here. Uh, Hugh Davis uh, says, uh, the away fans at uh, Watford will pull the boys through. Just watch. Rob says, hi, Ipswich fan here. Uh, now we have Burn. Burns out for the season alongside Hurst. Burgess not back from Oz International and more. A slight doubt after the Wales game. 
we are also concerned about this week. And that's really interesting news there, Rob. I've not looked up on the Ipswich team news there, but that is interesting. I think the beauty is obviously the Chelsea Loney and Mari Hutchinson has hit a different level of form with you guys. Um, I do really like Kiefer Moore, but if he if Kiefer Moore's out, I do look at the systematic way that you guys are playing now and he 100% gives you a plan B, 100%. And Kiefer Moore gives you that, like Pat Bamford gives us that. And I think him being out of that side, that's going to be interesting. Because it's not, it's not an easy game at all. Not an, not an easy game at all for Ipswich this weekend as well. Huge fan of Anthony. Uh, Rob Wilson, another Ipswich fan, says, uh, Ipswich fan now, I worried, uh, I, uh, now worried, I hate international breaks. Also, Samiento, two games for a doctor. Wow, there you go. So it's going to test. There you go, Rob. It's not just us, mate. It's testing the whole four. And this is why... You know, it's it's. It, the, I think this was always going to be the litmus test as well for Ipswich. We've not seen this a lot with you guys. Burns is was the big one, but I felt within that, and obviously Chaplin's been out, hasn't he? But he looks like he's going to be returning. But in that front four, it's always, in my opinion, been quite consistent, and the rotations have been very, very good. You've had good caliber players coming in, and um, I wonder now how that's going to play its part with Ipswich. But it's not just Ipswich. Now it is Leeds United. You know, we have that. We have that depth. But you are still taking a step down. You 100% are still taking a step down with Leeds United. Um, we won't win three 0 on Friday. Uh, three points the next two games. Yeah, and, and I, I wonder, I wonder how how many points you guys would take. Uh, JC says uh, that's why you have squad depth, and even with Shaxx at right back, we have enough to beat Watford and Hull. The positive news, everybody, to uh, sort of like end on this really is he said that Jorginho Rutter has been progressing well. Now, you guys know with me, I would love Nonto centrally. The Italians like to play him centrally. Um, he was actually, actually captain, captain for the 21s the other night, which was really nice to see. Clearly got, uh, the, you know, there's definitely a level of maturity that we've seen with interviews, with just his general demeanour, with Willy Nonto, which I'm a massive fan of. He's clearly growing as a person and been, the cap, been given the cap since he was great to see as well. But they were playing him centrally. Play shadow striker, play centre forward for the Italian side. So what I love about that is it gives Daniel Farke the indication that William Yonso can play centrally. That dynamism that he possesses is very unique. The low centre of gravity that he possesses in that sort of space, just in front of the, just behind the striker, I think is absolutely essential and would have him, you know, would be a really, really good position for Leeds to explore with him. I understand that at this point in the season, what's the point in te- sort of changing things around where you wouldn't have a pro in there and where you wouldn't have other personnel in certain positions that we've seen them in this season. We haven't seen Willian Yonso in the 10 really this season, in the shadow striker position. I just think it would be a, a really nice experiment and something that would work. But in terms of adaptability, you throw Perot in there. And the problem is Perot and Rutter are completely different profiles. Rutter is a completely unique profile. But he's closer to Nonso, much closer to Nonso. I think they can both get the ball on the back foot and drive at the centre backs. Perot's not going to do that. So, but the difference with Perot is right now, he scored 11 goals. Jorginho Rutter scored six. You know, William Nonso scored, what, seven? And it's staggering to think of that because Rutter has been arguably the best player in the championship this season. You know, he's got 16 assists with eight games to go. It's ridiculous. The record in the championships nineteen with Graham Dorans. So just think about that. Eight games to go. So having Rutter in that position is absolutely key. I like the bond him and Bamford have of 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 sort of galvanized together. I think when you get Rutter and Somerville close together in matches, it, it's almost unplayable at this level. So and obviously we've still got Dan James who's available. So I think that there's a lot of positives still going into this weekend for Leeds United. The only issue is, for me, it is, you know, that that right back spot. And obviously Junior Furpo. So you're going to have to change unless he puts Archie at, at right back. I don't know what he's going to do with the number six in, in midfield there because they've got two sixes in the squad, Gruev and Ampadu. So is he going to push Ampadu into the six and then bring Cresswell in? I don't know. I don't think he's going to do that. I don't think he's going to do that. So is the likelihood Archie going in the middle, Kamara going in the middle, and then Shaq's coming in at right back? I think that is the likelihood if Gruev is out for this one, if, um, and Roberts is also out for this one. 
Um, but yeah, just his tone today and his delivery, he was a little bit more positive. I thought about, you know, your rutters and that sort of thing, but I did think he was a little bit almost not saying it, but but coming of coming on the slant of it, maybe it is a little bit too soon for for certain people. And I do wonder, Nonto with a hamstring in particular, from someone who's suffered from you, you, every grade of hamstring string injury, I, I'd be I, I would really be shocked if he came back. Nonto and was was available to play, especially when you've got Dan James there. But Dan James has played recently as well. Um, where's his head at? But listen, I am positive about this weekend, but I do think this is going to test Daniel Farker and Leeds United's metal massively. But the options we still have going forward are, you know, worst case scenario: Jaden Anthony, Chris Somerville, Perot, Bamford. Um, Dan James, you know, that's worst case scenario. It's a very good scenario. Matty o. Joseph, you've still got six options, six quality options with the problems that we've got when it comes to injuries. The interesting point is also not only that, right, but that defensive midfield spot is going to be so interesting because he does not deviate away from a 4 2 3 1. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Connor, calm down. I am calm. Bob, what what about my demeanour do you distinguish as really irate right now, mate? I am calm. We're talking about every eventuality, my friend. <laughs> uh, Nonto might be out. I know, my friend. I know. Uh, you tend to get stupid results, says British game in Living the Dream um, after international break. Let's hope that isn't our game. Uh, do you not trust Cooper for a one-off game, Connor? Did play for Scotland the other night. Do you know what, Paul? Ever since, ever since Liam Cooper put in that performance against Southampton, where Russell Martin was on the verge of sack and they were terrible. And he literally got torn apart by Adam Armstrong for 90 minutes and basically made our defence, single-handedly, in my opinion, look trash. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought from that game onwards, I thought, look, this isn't just a Premier League thing. This is a championship thing with Liam Cooper. I don't mind Coops. I think he comes in and he'd head his grandma for Leeds United. I, I do think that. But I just wonder about, he's got this tendency to step out. And to step out, you've got to, he reads the game well. I still think he's got that football IQ. But I've always worried about when he steps out. I think he's been done his entire career at Leeds when he steps out. And that pace is completely decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. That yard that he didn't even have anyway. But that yard that you have to step out, win the ball ahead of the striker, I, it's, it's given me nightmares. That Southampton game has given me nightmares because I think he tried to step out about five times and got done four times. Um, and listen, yeah, playing he was the line that he was setting with with the rest of the defense was was atrocious because he was th the furthest one back playing Southampton on side several times. He's a great header of the ball. He's great when it comes to set pieces. I just worry when the opposition of players like Yasser Espria, who were going to be running probably at that back line, and then Liam Cooper's there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It never it never fills me with confidence. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Dusty Devil Prod says, uh, "Hey, first time I've managed to get you on a live. Usually it works. Hi, mate. Uh, Perot, if you get space in that tent, you can pick a pass. That's where you need either Cree, Willie, or James to make those moves into the channels with Bamford occupying the CBs. Yeah, yeah. And, and listen, imagine if we go in and it's all a poker face. That could happen. That could really happen." He could go in. This could be a complete poker face and Leeds could have, how many has he said, as he said, are out. He said, Grev, Nonso, Roberts and Furpo, essentially, and, and Rutter. Imagine if three of them are available, you know? Three of them are available and it's a bit of a poker face. That can happen. That's psychology. That's football mentality, you know? But the, the overarching question is, if all of them are out, worst case scenario, our Leeds going to be fine. I think so. The worry will be Hull. And I think Oscar summarised it perfectly. I think if you can come out of Watford, which will not be easy. I'm really worried if 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 you got if you guys or whoever thinks Watford will be, it's not going to be easy. It will not be easy at all. But if we come out of Watford, if we come out of Hull and Coventry in the next three with seven points, I'll be over the moon with that. I will be over the moon with that. I think that that puts you in really good stead, especially with what we've heard from Ipswich fans. Southampton are going through it a little bit. The likes of, you know, Bednarek, uh, apparently a little bit gingerly 
um, move in as well and, and a couple of other Southampton injuries. Leicester with the, the, the mass pressure that they've got on them right now. Um, if we come out of our next three with seven points, I think that with five games to go is put us in really good stead. And in my opinion, I could be wrong, in my opinion, in three games' time, Southampton are going to be out of it. It's what I think. I could be wrong. I've been wrong plenty of times on this channel, but I do think they're going to be out of it. And I know people don't like... People on YouTube hold back when it comes to claims. They'll say the obvious, but I will also stick my neck out a hell of a lot <laughs> on this channel. And people don't like that at all, by the way. Um, but I will stick my neck out, and I think Southampton are going to be out of it. You guys might not even think that's an outlandish claim. It might not be. Um, but if they're to win their two games in hand, they're only three points behind Leeds United. So they are still in it if we're looking at the whole context of the thing. But I just think their next two games are going to be tough for them. Um, and yeah, you do wonder how Russell Martin is going to deal with eight games in about 27 days, which is just ridiculous um, for, for any team, really. Um, and he's shown already um, when he's been fobbing off opposition players and, and kicking off on the touchline that he can't really handle pressure. The other pressure element is um, for someone like Enzo Maresca, who I don't think has faced anything like this. The beauty is, at this level, there's been one manager, one manager who's faced this pressure at this point in the season. And it's our guy. Enzo hasn't. Martin hasn't. McKenna hasn't. None of them has faced championship pressure at this point. The closest is McKenna, who's done it at League One level. League One is a completely different standard to the championships, closer than, you know, obviously League One and, and the championship is closer than the championship in the Premier League. But it is a, uh, it's a completely different level, really, when it when you look at the, you know, even like the mid the mid teams that are just are so much greater relative wise. Um, so it's only Farker. That gives me confidence. It really does because he's been there and done it twice. So key, it is key. Bits of experience like that. It's funny, but Coop's only played against Southampton because he played in the three 0 win against Watford and Farkin didn't want to change a winning team. Uh, yeah, mate, but Mr. Joe Rodon was left out, wasn't he? Uh, completely agree regarding Cooper. He's at least through and through. Just ability is the only thing. That's not a renewal for me. Um, British Game and the Dream says, you need to shorten that name, mate. Let's get some abbreviations there. Still believe Cooper can do a job against Watford, but Hull is a different story with them being a very good team. Paul says, are you still trying to enjoy uh, this season, Connor? Uh, once it's done, that's it then. Yeah, it's, it's hard, isn't it, Paul? I've always struggled as, as a Leeds United fan. And you guys have probably noticed that with me. I've just always struggled to really enjoy it. I always feel there's pressure on Leeds. Like, you know, in the Premier League, it'd have been so nice to have like a couple of Crystal Palace seasons at 12th, 13th. You know, the seasons we used to have in the Championship when we we're absolutely crap, but at that level, we were good enough. Like, it'd be nice to do that in the Premier League or whatever. It always just feels that Leeds, in my lifetime, have either just been completely in the abyss or they've just been, the pressure has been so high in, de, in terms of relegation or promotion. So I'm trying to enjoy it. I'd be enjoying it a hell of a lot more if we're 10 points clear. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, mate. We need to get this guy back up as well. This out of context one leads. I don't know where he's gone. It was a very funny account that. Uh, Monday is big. Ipswich play Southampton. Yeah, they do, Stephen. Uh, there is never an easy game. Would uh, I've not set the world alight every game. We got lucky against Leicester. Yeah, yeah, we are. We did. Oh, you're good, Connor. Hello, Juan. Hello, hello. What's the best result for us? Southampton versus Ipswich. A draw. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think if Southampton win, you're thinking, oh, <laughs> oh. They're back in it now because that, that'd be a big win. A big, big win at Ipswich or Portman Road where they don't lose, only to Leeds. But yeah, that'd be a big win. A real, real big win. Um, I've got Ipswich down to win that one. I think Ipswich will win that 3-1. But could be wrong. As I say, I've been wrong plenty of times on this channel. Uh, but yeah, it is. That's a, that's a really interesting, that's a saucy game. That What we can't do, and we've got to look, 
we're talking about Ipswich Southampton. Look at our game that night. Our game that night. And I don't want any of you, any of you to take them lightly. They are a nightmare. I've been, this, uh, the video I did with my final predictions table, I've got it at a cat's cock air between Norwich and Hull to get promoted. Never mind, just make the top six. Obviously, Ipswich are in that conversation. But Hull and Norwich are some proper teams right now. You know, Norwich have got that side where they've got some really decent players in there. Gabby Sara, arguably the best centre mid in the championship. Hull, look at Hull's team. Look at Hull. I don't know how they've done it. I don't know how they've done it. You look at the three that they've got going forward and you think that three, there's an argument it could they, they could fit in any other side in the division. An argument. Philogene, who's unbelievable, by the way, is so underrated this season. Zorori and Fabio Carvalho, who was at RB Leipzig three months ago <laughs> and has made a, a huge impact when he's come in. Like their team is is stacked, Seri in defensive midfield. So, and then on the bench, they've got the likes of, you know, Billy Sharp to come on, Triore to come on. He's assembled a proper team there, Liam Rossini. So that is, we're talking about Ipswich Southampton. I mean, Hull went to it, Hull went to Southampton and beat them. Do you know what I mean? This is what we're talking about here. So Ipswich and Southampton will be a focus on Monday night. But I tell you what, Leeds Hall's a massive game. And not only that, but it, it's it's a Yorkshire derby, isn't it? They hate us massively. So they're going to be right up for this one anyway. But they're playing some good football at the minute, Hull. Their last four or five games have been against teams in the top eight, I think. And they've not they've not lost once. So, and we went obviously to the, the, their stadium and earlier on in the season, they were one of the better teams we played. We didn't pick up all three points there. So it's going to be a huge game, a massive game for Leeds United. Um, and yeah, we've got to keep our, keep the focus on ourselves really there. And, and let's hope that we can actually have a proper team back for that one. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, Jay says, no need to build a pressure, Connor. Uh, we'll have the league sealed up by mid-April and Ipswich will sealed. I'll, I, 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 that's a nice way of putting it, mate. It's a nice way of putting it and I hope you're right. Uh, hi, Connor. I hope all is well. If Leeds are promoted to the Premiership next season, would you make uh, the Connor Roberts deal permanent considering his Prem experience? Yes, I would, mate. I would make Connor Roberts a, a, a sign-in, even if he's depth, which I don't think he would be. Um, I think Archie would move back centrally with Ampadu. I think, yeah. I think it benefits Archie and it benefits Leeds at right back as well because Roberts has done it before and I think he's a decent player. He's a decent player, Premier League level. Um, and I quite like the narrative that he was really upset when Burnley didn't stick with him in the Premier League after he'd done so well in the Championship and scored the, essentially the goal that, that brought them into the Premier League and he was burnt by the fact that company didn't want to stick with him. I like that. Surely that's a bit of a driver and motivation for him to be starting in the Premier League and prove someone like Vincent Company wrong. Nice little story arc there, I think. Uh, Leicester also playing Norwich Easter Monday. Some great games. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Paul, if you want to watch along, like the video, right? So I've been debating this. Like the video, comment underneath that you want to see a watch along and I'll make an assessment. I'll make an assessment, but there is potential. Roberts was outstanding against Paul last night. Was watching Bale in his prime. Yeah, it's some some unbelievable bit of skill. Rode on as well. Wow, against Lewandowski, what a performance, uh, guys! We have been going on for a while. Uh, Matt Oak says, uh, "Afternoon, Connor, three 0 from Canada." Thank you, Matt, for your prediction there. Let me know you took score predictions in the section below. If you want some more bonus content, go watch the free video from earlier on today. We've got Newcastle and Spurs. Been interested in the Leeds United youth product. Very interesting that one. Uh, we've also got a podcast which is live now on the Patreon. You can join four quid a month, or if you want to become a YouTube member, hit the join button just below where near subscribe. Subscribe. Two quid a month, become part of the One Leads Army. We've got a hell of a lot of you so far. It's been an absolute pleasure, everybody. Before you leave, like the video, absolutely free. Comment if you want to see a watch long. Whatever you want to see in the future, let me know. Lives, pre-record, all that sort of stuff. Subscribe. And if you want my dad on the debrief, we can get it sorted. How about that? Let me know in the comment section below, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. See you in a bit. Cheers. <laughs>